In our daily lives, we need something that will help us support ourselves, whether if it's in emotions, mentality, and especially for physical means. As for humans, we need legs and feet to walk. For cars, we need tires to drive around. Same as goes to an aircraft, while on cruising in the ground before and after flight. Still confused? Don't worry, we'll help you along the way. Come join us and let us see structures and configurations of landing gears of aircrafts. The landing gear is a part of an aircraft normally situated in the undercarriage to enable a safe landing and takeoff. There are many types of these landing gears with a different set of purposes usually fit for the purpose of the aircraft it is attached to. The landing gear supports the aircraft during landing and while it is on the ground. Simple aircraft that fly at low speeds generally have fixed gear. This means the gear is stationary and does not retract for flight. Faster, more complex aircraft have retractable landing gear. After takeoff, the landing gear is retracted into the fuselage or wings and out of the airstream. This is important because extended gear creates significant parasite drag which which reduces performance. Parasite drag is caused by the friction of the air flowing over the gear. It increases with speed. On very light, slow aircraft, the extra weight that accompanies a retractable landing gear is more of a detriment than, than the drag caused by the fixed gear. Lightweight fairings and wheel pants can be used to keep drag to a minimum. A skid landing gear, these are normally used by helicopters. They provide a light, sturdy, and a simple design. A ski landing gear are used when landing on odd surfaces such as snow or water. The skis are made to function on water are called pontoons. The skis used to function on ice and snowy surfaces are called skis. Amphibious aircraft are aircraft that can land either on land or on water. On some aircraft designed for such dual usage, the bottom half of the fuselage acts as a hull. Usually, it is accompanied by outriggers on the underside of the wings near the tips to aid in water landing and taxi. Main gear that retract into the fuselage are only extended when landing on the ground or on or a runway. This type of amphibious aircraft is sometimes called flying boat. Tricycle gear is the most prevalent landing gear configuration in aviation. In addition to the main wheels, a shock absorbing nose wheel is at the forward end of the fuselage. Thus, the center of gravity is then forward of the main wheels. The tail of the aircraft is suspended off the ground and clear view straight ahead from the cockpit is given. Ground looping is nearly eliminated since the center of gravity follows the directional nose wheel and remains between the mains. While the tricycle landing gear might be the most common today, that was not always the case. For the first four decades of flight, the tail wheel undercarriage dominated the aircraft design and is still commonly used on many tiny piston engine tanks. The arrangement of the tail dragger consists of two main gear units located near the center of gravity that support most of the weight of the aircraft. At the rear of the fuselage, a much smaller support is often mounted such as the plane tends to drag its tail, hence the name tail wheel landing gear or tail dragger gear. Typically, this tail unit is a very small wheel, but it may also be a skid with a very simple design. The bicycle landing gear is a relatively uncommon landing gear choice. Bicycle gear comprises two main gears, one forward and one aft of the center of gravity along the aircraft's center line. There are two small outrigger gears positioned along the wing to keep the plane from tilting over sideways. If there are more than two wheels attached to the main landing gear, the layout is a bogey. Larger aircraft usually have a multi-bogey layout with a great number of wheels on each part of the landing gears. Next is the single main landing gear. The single main landing gear is a distinctive subcategory of the bicycle landing gear. This configuration features a single wide landing gear unit 
and along the center line, there is a much smaller auxiliary tail width. For stability purposes, outriggers are once again given. This design is especially straightforward, lightweight, and no drag, and may involve skids rather than wheels. This simplicity makes the arrangement of the gear desirable for use on light planes such as gliders and sailplanes. But for a larger aircraft, the single main gear is usually impractical. Next is the quadricycle landing gear. The quadricycle landing gear are also very similar to the bicycle landing gear except there are four main gears roughly equal in size and mounted along the fuselage. The quadricycle landing gear often requires a very flat attitude during takeoff and landing, much like the bicycle landing gear. This structure is also very sensitive to the runway's roll, crosswinds, and proper alignment. Let's now move on to the different structures of landing gears. The landing gear structure is a complex system consisting of structural members, hydraulics, energy absorption components, brakes, wheels, and tires. Additional components attached to the functioning with the landing gear may include the steering devices and the retracting mechanisms. Now let's talk about the shock absorbing and the non-shock absorbing gears. For shock absorbing gear, the shock energy is altered and transferred throughout the airframe at a different rate and time than the single strong pulse of impact. Non-shock absorbing gears, on the other hand, are the shock that is absorbed by converting the energy into heat energy. Non-shock absorbing gears are also called the bungee cords. Typical landing gear arrangement It consists of an upper and lower link hinged at the center that permits the brace to jackknife during a retraction of the gear. The upper end pivots on a trunnion attached to structure in the wheel well overhead. The lower end is attached to the shock strut. A locking link is incorporated between the upper end of the shock strut and the lower drag link. This locks the gear securely in the down position to prevent collapse of the gear. To adjust the over-center position of the side brace locking link, the aircraft must be placed on jacks. With the landing gear in the down position, the lock link and fitting is adjusted so that the brace links are held firmly over-center. <laughs> Getting bored? Expecting you would say that, but we got it covered because we'll share some crazy yet awesome facts about landing gears. Here are some fun facts you need to know. So, ever wondered how tough, really, our landing tire gears are? I say very tough. Do you know that landing gears on passenger jets is made up of a number of tough tires? as many as 22 of them on the massive Airbus A380. The tires need to be incredibly strong because they have to go from 0 to 150 miles per hour when they hit the runway. I say that's really tough. What do you think? Another one. Why do airplane tires don't explode when they land? Well, because they are pumped. Literally, they are pumped. They're like the tires on your car, but way stronger. The typical airliner tire can handle a 38-ton load. It can meet the ground 500 times before needing a retread. A refresh, it can take on 7 times in its life. Now that's what I call an immoral thing. And now for the million dollar question. What if airplanes had landing gears? but made from tank wheels. Literally, from tanks. Well, it really happened. In the 1950s, the American Air Force experimented with the tank-style wheels. Imagine a plane with tank wheels? That would be so awesome. <laughs>